Hey guys, it's Mikey's Mind here, back again with another book review. Uh, today I want to talk about a, a book I picked up uh, recently in the supermarket, The Family Upstairs um, by Lisa Jewell. I bought this for um, a family member for Christmas and um, she said she loved it and read through it really quickly and that I just thought if she loved it that much I need to get my own copy. So I, um, I bought my own copy and I was really, really pleasantly surprised. I love sort of suspense novels, thrillers, mystery. I love... Um, that kind of family drama. Um, I've really enjoyed books like that in the past and this one really delivered. Um, I've not read uh, Lisa Jewell before but people who have are saying this she's in her sort of best territory here, her best work. Um, so I would definitely read more Lisa Jewell again after having read this one. It's uh, sort of three, four hundred pages, 450 pages I think it ended up at and I've read it in probably three or four sittings. Um, it's called The Family Upstairs and the title drew me in, but the title was really quite misleading. I'll come to that. But I was thinking sort of thriller. I've seen films and read books where there are people living in the house that the occupants don't know about. And I was thinking along those lines. Um, the blurb talks about bodies being found and a baby surviving a, a, a murder or a suicide pact. Um, there's a baby alive in a cot or a crib. But the rest of the family are nowhere to be found. And um, that's the sort of setup. And that's how the book's packaged and that led me down a sort of expectation of a, a thriller. It's not that at all. And I put it on Twitter that within the first few chapters, I had to open up a, a notes page on my on my phone to keep track of everything that was going on. Because very early on, we've got family across different generations. We've got siblings on different parts of the continent. So we've got um, people all over the all over Europe. And we're also flicking back to Chelsea, London in the 80s, 90s. So I was thinking, hang on, I've got different timelines and a bit of a family tree going on here. And so I had to work really quite hard to keep up with it. Um, and making those few notes and little sort of family tree kind of ideas really helped me. And I think that's what made me get the most out of the book because I think I'd have lost the thread. Um, if you're considering reading it, do so. Um, basically, you've got... Um, in the 80s or 90s you've got this big mansion in Chelsea in London really affluent part of London one of the most expensive parts very fancy very posh and um, Libby is 25 and she's just inherited this property she starts out by sort of thinking can I buy those shoes can I afford dinner in a restaurant I should, I should be careful with money now she's just inherited this property worth millions um, and it's disrupted her life now she's very sort of Libby has no connection with the property when she's in there she's she learns that she was the baby that was found in this crime scene um 25 years ago she was alive and well and seemingly being looked after by somebody but her parents are nowhere to be seen and her siblings are nowhere to be seen there were uh, two bodies uh, two adult bodies found those were her parents there was another male body alongside them unknown to her unknown and her teenage siblings are nowhere to be seen. So what you've got is this very strange situation. And the way I'd introduce it is that what was going on um, in the 80s and 90s when Libby, our protagonist, was a baby. And when her siblings were teenagers, um, Henry and Lucy, their families kind of completely changed. Their home is completely changed. Because what who enters what enters a monster someone called david thompson and he's just he's almost like a cult leader um in a very short space of time he manages to get them to give up all their property all their possessions they wear very plain clothes black tunics they give up all their possessions libby's family is really quite wealthy at the start um and he sort of infiltrated it and the parents are weaker and weaker and weaker. He's got this musician, Birdie, she's called. She sort of films a music video in the home and, and she's this very sort of like momentary sort of pop star. But she has this grip and this power over everybody in the house. And it's so disturbing to watch this family deteriorate and unravel. Um, we know from the blurb that there's this mass murder or mass suicide pact. These bodies have, have, have appeared. Um and it's up to Libby and the help of a journalist who covered the story and her friend uh, Dido. It's up to those three to uncover the truth and, and explore the house a little bit. They find a sock and they find that it's a modern sock. The, it uses a particular logo that Gap only used recently. And so they, they realise that somebody is living in the house. Um, We've got a really unreliable narrator in Libby's teen brother, Henry. He's a fascinating character, really struggling with his sexuality. And he 
is so unreliable and I've read the book and I've read the reviews online and I still don't know if he's tortured and tormented or malicious and evil or sympathetic or dark or he's 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 not quite anything he's neither he's he's not sympathetic and tragic and abused and all the rest of it but he's also not not particularly nice and his actions are so questionable so 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 questionable um and I still don't know where I sit and I think it's the sign of a good character because I'm still thinking about him um what else could I say? Well, I mean, to be honest, it's it's like I say, it spans Europe. At the start, you've got this mum um, to two young children struggling um, to get across Europe back to London. Um, we're unsure about anybody's link to anybody. And I didn't quite see it coming. I read a review and they were like, oh, my God, I saw it coming straight away. I, I realised who Libby was and how she fitted into this family and, and, and who related to her in which ways. I won't give more away. But I didn't see that coming and I never do. I'm pretty basic when I when I read these kind of books. But um really 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 good and it's a proper page turner it really does keep you guessing i sort of i mean i've not read everybody but like when i think of books i have read i think i'd place it somewhere among ruth ware and harlan cove and those kind of lines um but it stands alone and it's fantastic and i'd read more again um i really would i thought it was really interesting that like i said the title was quite misleading <clears throat> there is no family upstairs there's no when when you've got these cult kind of leaders coming into the home and joining your family and taking it over completely and starting relationships and sexual relationships and pregnancies and all sorts when they take complete control of the home they're not really living upstairs they're all living together um like i said it made me think of a, a secret or a migrant family or something like that some sort of sublet situation i was i was thinking along those lines and it's just it's just not really um so i don't know i don't know why jewel settled on the family upstairs odd um I really, really liked the character of Lucy. I said she was a struggling mum living on the other side of Europe and making her way home. Um, she has a really tragic time of it. She's heartbroken. She's been messed around. She's been abused. She's got two children that she's trying to raise to the best of her her, her abilities and, and all the rest of it with a dire financial situation. She's trying to get passports. She's trying to get her family, including a dog, across Europe and back into London. And I think the more I heard of her story, the better. Um, Someone on a review said they didn't like Libby and Lucy's chapters and moments. I really did. I thought Lucy was a really sympathetic character and um, very believable and very, uh, yeah, some really dark moments that I think those those really harrowing moments coming to terms with trauma and abuse and that, very, very powerful. Um, so, yeah, I liked that. Henry, again, psychologically baffling character. Um, when he narrates as a 13, 12, 11, 11 12, 13-year-old boy, very, very difficult, very unreliable and there's moments where i think hang on and it's henry who flips the script and when it comes to identity and posing as people and being obsessed with people and then you know for example there's a moment where henry ends up in the thames he's pushed into the river um by finn who is the son of this cult leader but when we learn about how and why that truly happened you think man i actually i now i see and, and so yeah he he has to make peace with a lot of things um, there's some really interesting characters. Uh, you've got Birdie. I, I mentioned Birdie, the musician. She's with a bloke called Justin at the start who moves in as well because everyone moves into the Chelsea mansion. Um, it's such a strange setup. And again, someone online said that what they'd like to have seen is the, um, more time, because there's 450 pages, so more time spent examining and, and, and witnessing the deterioration of the household unit and watching the watching the house change, watching the dynamic change, watching roles change. Um, it happens quite quickly. Um, illness sort of sets in. Henry's dad, the initial owner of the home and, and Libby's relative, he has a stroke. And, and, and so this his control over the home is just is shattered and lost. And yeah, they'd like to have seen more, um, more an account of, of how that unraveled and how how that toxic grip was allowed to take hold because it's such i can't describe it it's not a cult it's not a it's like a commune it's it's very very strange um but read it it really 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 will keep you reading long into the night as it did me and um, thanks so much for watching this video i really appreciate it any feedback anyone want to talk about the book get in touch in the comments and any recommendations along what i've said today um anything similar give me a shout thanks guys take care